So in this example, we have two ionic compounds reacting together, and we have to figure out what the products are. So we can use the double displacement reaction. The cation potassium is going to pair up with the anion nitrate, and remember potassium is always a plus one, nitrate is always a minus one, so potassium nitrate comes together in a one-to-one -one mole to mole ratio. We're going to leave a space for the coefficient and leave a space for the phase. And then the second product would be the positive 2 cadmium pairing up with the negative 1 hydroxide to make cadmium hydroxide. And so we can balance this reaction by changing the coefficients and we need to balance out two hydroxides on both sides. That's going to mean we need two coefficient of two in front of the potassium nitrate. Now to figure out the phases, we can use the solubility chart. And if I pull up a copy of this solubility chart, we're looking for potassium hydroxide, which is soluble, and cadmium nitrate, which is also soluble. On the product side, we make potassium nitrate, which is soluble, and cadmium hydroxide, which is insoluble. So we make a precipitate. Cadmium hydroxide is the only solid. Everything else is soluble in water, so everything else is aqueous. Now, ionic aqueous compounds do not stay together. They dissociate. It's the reverse of the crisscross. You're reforming the cations and anions when it goes into solution. So, for example, potassium hydroxide is not going to stay together as a molecule of potassium hydroxide. Instead, it dissociates into potassium aqueous and hydroxide aqueous. And the fact that we have coefficient of 2 means we're going to make two of those cations and two of those anions. So every ionic aqueous compound is going to dissociate. So we're going to have cadmium separated from the two nitrates and on the product side potassium nitrate is going to dissociate into two potassiums and two nitrates. The one we do not dissociate is the cadmium hydroxide because that's a solid that's a precipitate that did not dissolve. If it doesn't dissolve, it can't dissociate. So the cadmium hydroxide stays as a solid. The top line is the overall balanced equation. What we just wrote down is the complete ionic equation. And there's some things you can notice in the complete ionic equation, things like 2 potassium on the left would cancel 2 potassium on the right. Those are not participating in the reaction. It's a spectator ion. We also have a spectator ion with nitrate. So what we're left with at the end is where the actual chemistry takes place. Cadmium reacts with two hydroxides and forms cadmium hydroxide solid. After you cancel out the spectator ions, you're left with the net ionic equation. Another example, we can use this with an acid reacting with a base. Sodium hydroxide, you can consider it to be an ionic compound. It's a salt. It's also a strong base. Hydrochloric acid is one of the six strong acids. And on this solubility chart, notice 
this is the solubility of ionic compounds and acids do not show up here there's no H plus cation for you to look for so when you're dealing with acids and bases for our classes the acids are soluble so hydrochloric acid does dissolve in water there are many acids that do not dissolve in water but the acids we're going to deal with will dissolve in water so hydrochloric acid is aqueous sodium hydroxide is also aqueous we can use the double displacement reaction to figure out the two products H plus pairs up with OH minus that makes HOH which could be written as H2O now water is a molecular compound so it will not be on the solubility chart you don't look on the solubility chart to ask yourself does water dissolve in water water is a pure liquid we're not going to write H2O in solution it's H2O liquid and the other product is salt sodium chloride which is definitely soluble in water this is a nice one-to-one -one, mole to mole ratio so we don't need to change any coefficients but we can also write the net ionic equation and the complete ionic equation strong acids just like soluble ionic compounds are also dissociated so this is going to separate into H plus and Cl minus the strong base sodium hydroxide ionic and aqueous so we dissociate that also however water is not an ionic compound we're not going to dissociate it this is a molecular compound so it stays together as H2O sodium chloride is ionic and aqueous so we dissociate it so there we have our complete ionic equation and we have some spectators again sodium plus on the left and right cancel so does chloride on the left and the right so the net ionic equation for this strong acid reacting with the strong base is H plus plus OH minus makes liquid water if we switch to a weak acid carbonic acid excuse me, is a weak acid. We react this with the strong base, potassium hydroxide. We can figure out the products. Do your crisscross and remember your charges. Potassium carbonate is aqueous. And the second product is water, which would be liquid. We need to balance this. So we need a coefficient of two in front of the potassium hydroxide uh, and then we need a coefficient of two in front of the water so again acids are not on the solubility chart but they are aqueous the potassium hydroxide is on the chart that's also aqueous the difference here because this is weak weak acids do not dissociate the way that strong acids do you're going to learn later on that weak acids dissociate 100%, or strong acids dissociate 100% rather, weak acids dissociate very little. So when you write the complete ionic equation, if it's a weak acid, you leave this together as carbonic acid. That's potassium hydroxide is a strong base that is soluble ionic compound so we're going to dissociate it into K plus and OH minus two of those on the product side potassium carbonate ionic and aqueous so this also gets dissociated and then the last product water because that's a molecular compound that stays together so we still have some spectators, two potassium cancels two potassium. And so we're left with our net ionic equation, 
the weak acid we do not dissociate plus two hydroxides makes carbonate and two waters.